Welcome to the On Deck Podcast presented by Line Star. I'm Chin in Somerville here with Tyler Weeman, ready to break down your daily fantasy baseball slate for today. Today, Tyler, it's a Mondo slate. It There's is a Mondo. Games on deck for today, and we've got a lot of great pitching options Big for you. Boy. We'll get to that, and we'll also get to your home run calls and prop bets. Tyler hit his home run call, mm -hmm. and because it was Austin Riley, yeah. also hit my prop as well. So we will be announcing a winner later in the show for yes. our prop bets contest. One lucky commenter will win $60. That'll come up later in the show. Today is Friday, September 2nd. Beautiful Friday. It is National College Colors Day. Go dogs. That's all I got to say. Big game tomorrow. Are you guys surprised that came out, go dogs? <laughs> uh, it is the last Friday before NFL season. We're there. It is also National Blueberry Popsicle Day. Remember when we had this huge debate earlier mm -hmm. in the season when it was National Ice Pops Day? Yep. So blueberry gets its own day because it's the superior flavor. You were the hmm. weirdo who I, likes orange. I'm going to have to say no. <laughs> it is like not a superior flavor. flavor. <laughs> but I would love one right now. <laughs> sounds, sounds nice. Nice and refreshing. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. Dogs have a big game tomorrow. So rep in the red. Mm -hmm. That's... Not really why. I just picked out a red shirt. It just so happened to coincide with. Uh, I do day. notice you don't have your Padres sweatshirt on. You know. I I got to bring that up. Uh, I got. It's I in got my one. laundry. LFG. Your Padres. LFG. <laughs> All right. If we don't hit our props today, it'll bring. I'll bust it back. You just on. gotta always wear it then. <laughs> I'll break it back. <laughs> They're gonna be like. Yeah. <laughs> Why is this hey. girl wearing the same shirt every day? Hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? Is It is a big weekend for the Padres. All right. We got the Dodgers. Yeah. You know? Okay. Well, yeah, big uh, weekend for the Yankees as well. We'll get hey, into that. Hey, I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. All right. That makes me feel worse. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you exactly know, whenever why the I said parents it. say she's exactly. disappointed, it's like, exactly. Oh. Let's get into some MLB storylines for today. And we first have got to talk about that pitching performance yesterday from Spencer Strider, who was absolutely mm -hmm. filthy, completely masterful in his 16 strikeout performance, which is the most for an Atlanta Brave in history, which is just absolutely crazy. Now, he did say that he didn't even know that was going on. He said he kind of lost track of the strikeouts after about six. And then I guess I mean, you can only count something. so high. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody said something to him in the dugout about uh, John Smoltz. And he was like, what are they talking about? And then I guess after mm. they told him and pretty cool. I, it's amazing. Like the, that game that he had is incredible. And he needs to get some votes for Cy Young. Yeah. I don't. Or the over yesterday. Yeah, don't on, think a win. The over under was seven, seven and, and a half, half strikeouts. Yeah. Yeah, he, so he's like, I'm he gonna double it. it. Yeah, not a big deal. It would have been nice to just ladder strikeout props with him. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So I was curious as to the most strikeouts in the big leagues, and it was Walker Bueller who struck out 16 back in 2019. So that was the last 16 strikeout performances mm -hmm. that we've seen. And speaking of Walker Bueller and the Dodgers, man, mm -hmm. talk about an abundance of riches. Listen to this. Their minor league pitcher, Bobby Miller, who's the 27th overall prospect, struck out a career-high 14 strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Granted, it was minor leagues, but uh, they've got even more in their pitching yeah, arsenal to come. Dustin May is, is back scary. and pitching with him. The uh – Dodgers are coming yeah. around. Dodgers lead Major League Baseball in team average, OBP, slugging, as well as team ERA, whip, and batting average against. It's just absurd. God, I just hate them. I know you do. <laughs> I just hate them. <laughs> so the Yankees, as we talked about yesterday, are in this abysmal stretch. I think they heard you. Yeah, and yesterday I was pretty fired up. And they after heard the you. Show, I was like, "All right, what can we do to fix things?" And I had come to the conclusion: it's time to call up 
Mm -hmm. Oswald Peraza, who was just absolutely raking in AAA. And they must have heard me because... I think so. uh, They finally called up the prized shortstop Mm -hmm. prospect. Now, he was a guy who a lot of teams were asking for in the trade deadline. So good thing they didn't get rid of him. Rated the number two prospect within the Yankees organization. And he is actually set to become the first Yankees big leaguer born in this millennium. Which is wow. kind of wild. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, slashing 258, 329, 440 in the minors. He hit 18 homers, swiped 33, ba- 33 bases on 38 attempts. So he's got some speed on the base paths as well. Mm-hmm. And then we've also got waiting in the wings, Anthony Volpe, who is the Yankees' yep. top prospect. He was promoted to AAA, so he's also waiting in the wings. So... I know I've been disappointed in Isaiah kind of for Leffa, who's just been committing a lot of errors, just hasn't been doing IKF, much of the play. IKF has been terrible. Right. He he was supposed to be a great defensive shortstop. And, and he's these, been bad. Right. I mean, these errors are – and it cost them the game against the Angels the other day. I really do think that they might have heard you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had to leave the office early yesterday, <laughs> and when I did <laughs> – my phone just kept getting blown up by slacks <laughs> from Shannon talking about how the Yankees were so bad and that they need to call up uh, Peraza. Yes. So they did. And they so did. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. He will be joining the Yankees at Tropicana Field today where they will begin a three-game set against the Rays who are trailing them by just six games now in the AL East. Remember, they had a 15-and-a-half mm-hmm. game lead. Down to six, so it is. crucial series yep. for the Yankees. So hopefully he provides the spark that I they need. I might like the pitcher against them today. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Some weather notes for you today. Just one, Cubs at St. Louis. It's going to be kind of gross. Light showers drizzle throughout the night. Not heavy downpour, so it's something they could decide we're just going to play through this or they can just outright cancel it all together. So just keep an eye on that one if you've got some players in that matchup. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure that you like this video. Subscribe to our channel and comment below. We've got a lot of shows coming out next week with football season less than a week away. Mm -hmm. That Thursday night game is fast approaching. Rams versus Bills. We've got a lot to get to in NFL next week, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel so you can keep up with that. And I believe we're going to do a little first look at uh, next Sunday's slate. We are also going to take an early look at Mm -hmm. some of the DFS options for next week on the the main slates and Mm -hmm. kind of everything you need to know ahead of time. We'll also update that next week as we learn more. However, Mm -hmm. a nice little primer for your first weekend of NFL football. It's here, guys. It is here. We are busy next week. We're still talking about baseball. Yep. So let's do it for today. Taking a look at the pitchers in our chalk report. The high-owned pitchers for today on DFS. The first one is going to be Braves righty Charlie Morton going up against the Marlins. He's 42% owned on DraftKings, 40% ownership on FanDuel. Man, how do you like to be Charlie Morton today following up yesterday's <laughs> performance by Spencer Strider? He's had to do it all season, though. <laughs> That's like, true. I, it's, he's got it's a, wild. Yeah, he's got a 4-1 ERA. However, his opponent average is pretty good, 226 mm-hmm. there. Last game, four earned runs in five with four strikeouts versus the Cardinals. But over uh, eight strikeouts per game in his last five, so he's gotten up there in the yeah. strikeouts. So last game against the Cardinals, they're a really good hitting team. The Marlins, however, are not. Absolutely. Uh, You brought up his strikeout numbers. He has been great lately. Mm -hmm. In the last five starts, 34% K rate. (laughs) So very high K rate. He's maybe learning something from Strider. There you go. Uh, The FIP not, you know, the FIP's fine. It's 3.65. You'd like that. A little lower for his price point, but there is solid upside here. Miami strikes out a decent amount. They're not that great of an offense. 292 Woba versus righties and a 127 ISO. So pretty low ISO. Uh, The bad with Morton, though, is his stat cast data is a little sketchy. He is allowing a decent amount of barrel balls. 
uh, 30% hard contact, 39% fly balls. The one good thing, like I said, is that Miami's not hitting the ball that hard. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe some of that will uh, get by and, right. and he'll be good. But he does have great upside, 27% combined K rate. Last time he faced the Marlins, three earned runs and five and a third, five strikeouts. That was early in the season, though. He seems mm-hmm. to have gotten there with the strikeout numbers. So yeah. You could see that a bit higher. Today. And if we remember, he started off a season pretty, right. pretty slow. He didn't have his spring training. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's definitely in his groove recently. So. Keeping it with the NL East, we're going to Mets lefty David Peterson going up against the Nationals today. 40% ownership on DraftKings, 23% on FanDuel. 3-2-1 ERA, 227 opponent average. Last game held the Rockies to just four hits in six scoreless innings with seven strikeouts. Man, that pitching staff for the Mets. I, it's good, and, and Peterson's been solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, 26% K rate over his last five, th- a FIP of three. So he's been extremely good. Uh, 26% com- uh, percent combined K rate. So there is some upside there. He's not that expensive. And uh, Washington offense is just kind of meh. Mm-hmm. I think the uh, the whole, you know, Soto's gone. We got to prove ourselves thing is kind of worn off in there coming back down to earth is being yeah. not that great of an offense. All right. So those are our high owned options. Would you say they're both fairly good options? Absolutely. Their yeah. I, Peterson's definitely a lot more shaky than uh, Morton, but you can go to both of them. All right. Let's take a look at some low owned options for your pitchers today. First guy we're going to look at is Tampa Bay lefty Jeff D- Jeffrey Springs. He's going up against the Yankees today, 19% owned on DraftKings. So not too many people there, which surprises Mm -mm. me, especially given the fact that the Yankees have the second lowest average, I believe, the last 30 days. They just have not been hitting. And at this point, I see why people would absolutely want to fade the Yankees in just about every game. Not to mention, Springs has just been filthy this season. And that's exactly why like, I don't mind going there. One, Springs is too cheap. He has a FIP of two, 29.5% K rate over his last five starts. So there's great upside there. The Yankees strike out a lot, mm-hmm. 25.3% K rate. Uh, so I think there's a lot to like here. He's also been good against uh, against the Yankees, so why not? Kind of yeah. keep going to it. Uh, one thing, what did we say his ownership was? 19 on DraftKings. Looks like it's 22% now, so, so it's, it's gone up, up a, a little bit. And I would not be surprised if that kept happening throughout the day. Okay. Keep an eye on that ownership for Jeffrey Springs. Let's take mm-hmm. a look now at Cardinals. Jordan Montgomery going up against the Cubs today. A former Yankee mm-hmm. who has just been dominating since the trade to the Cardinals if now going up against the Cubs also a mediocre to poor offense yes uh before we get into this Mm -hmm. I have a question for you if the Yankees lose first Mm, they're going to what do you think will be said about that Jordan Montgomery trade because yeah, he has crushed he, it my since. My issue is less with the pitching staff, mm-hmm. although they've had some issues. Nestor Cortez on the shelf. Like, they mm-hmm. have had some injuries. Yeah. You know, they haven't been doing bad. I had this discussion with my dad yesterday. I was telling him, like, <laughs> Garrett Cole hasn't been bad. And no. he's had made a few mistakes there, here and there, like the home run to Shohei. Yeah. But he wouldn't have been in that situation had – uh, his infield not made errors uh, at this point. Cole's got to be <clears throat> so frustrated with, you know, yeah, he's, it's he's almost like inducing ground balls, but yeah. they're not fielding it properly. It's so, almost like IKF just has a vendetta against Cole. <laughs> just boots a ball <laughs> right? every single time. Man. So, I mean, hopefully uh, Oswald Peraza can spark some life in them. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a tough outing for him as his first game is against Jeffrey Springs. So. Yeah. We'll see what's coming. But Jordan Montgomery, yeah, I mean, it's, he's, he he's wasn't bad dealing. for the Yankees either. It's not like they were no. tra- they were trading a good player. But he's in been that situation. a better pitcher since he's left That's the Yankees. True. Which makes you think, you know, is he 
in a better pitching coaching situation is it also learning <coughs> from guys like Wainwright stuff like that or is it just like um we we've talked about it on you know maybe it was the last time Montgomery's pitching or the time before that that I think the Cardinals traded for him because they saw something they can improve because mm-hmm. his K rates up his FIP is down like there he changed something mm-hmm. um and I haven't looked in depth as far as what it is right. but maybe it's the pitch mix changed mm-hmm. or or there's something going on that has changed 2.26 FIP over his last five uh starts 24.6 er, percent uh, K rate which that is up from like 22 percent so he's been great 3.4 uh, implied run total for the Cubs, 22% combined K rate. He's he's in a good spot. Um, nobody's really going there, so I I think it's nice to kind of take some chances with a uh, good old Gumby. What's unfortunate, probably the only unfortunate thing about Jordan Montgomery is that he used to play his college ball at South Carolina with the Gamecocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, news on that note. I was just gonna say it. <laughs> They're back. Sir Big Spur yeah. is keeping his name. I know you can all breathe a uh, sigh of relief over that one. Yeah, Ryan uh, Ryan texts me <laughs> an article about it, and, you know, yeah, so controversy is over. If you I, I still think they should have went cock We talked about it. Of course, there was a lot of controversy over uh, the naming of B- Sir Big Spur, which is their rooster mm-hmm. that they have at the game, and I guess it switched ownerships, and they were going to sue over the naming rights, but now I guess all is right in the Gamecocks mm-hmm. mascot world. Sir Big Spur will keep his name. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of ones that were thrown around out there, so. <laughs> yep. Should have went with Cock Commander. Even the quarterback of the Gamecocks was like, I thought it was going to yeah. be Cock Commander as the new name. And so I think the fan base. I, I bet he knew. He just wanted to say Cock Commander. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> kind of like what I want to call Rich Hill Dick Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> We're so mature on this show. Yeah, it's fun. Let's take a look now back on track with Mm -hmm. Seattle righty Luis Castillo. He's at the Guardians today. Just 6% owned on DraftKings, so ownership is not there. Mm -hmm. And surprising given his stats, 285 ERA, 207 opponent average. Last game, 10 strikeouts. Yeah, the Guardians are a better offense than most. However, Castillo has been lights out. Yeah, the Guardians are a decent offense but they don't have a ton of guys that hit the ball over the wall uh the one thing that they do really good is limit strikeouts though Mm -hmm. so that is the negative part with uh castillo today however castillo is great 31 percent k rate over his last Mm -hmm. five starts 2.9 fip uh really the downside here is the fact that the guardians uh have done well to limit strikeouts and then also against the guardians in 61 plate attempts they're hitting 321 off him Mm -hmm. so they have had success Mm -hmm. off uh castillo but i wouldn't be too worried about those bvp numbers i i think castillo's in a good spot and he did not have success yesterday against kyle bradish that's for sure i I had uh, Jose Ramirez as my home run call, and I believe they only had two hits against Kyle Radish. He was dealing. Yeah, we we talked about that a little bit yesterday, how we had that magical game, and I guess he found something. Found it. Yeah. All right. Now let's take a look at our team stacks for today. First, we'll go over where the field is headed, Mm -hmm. the high-owned stacks of the day. First, we're looking at the Boston Red Sox going up against Rangers lefty Dallas Keuchel. Mm -hmm. This is his third team this season. Yeah. He started off with White Sox, then went to D-backs. Now he's with the Rangers. So it's his third team this season. His numbers overall, 884 ERA and 349 opponent average last outing, which was his first for the Rangers. Gave up seven earned runs and five and a third versus the Tigers with just one strikeout. So you can see... Based on all of that, why people are gravitating towards Red Sox bats for today. Absolutely. And this is the one pitcher that you might rather, if you're stacking against them, you may rather have instead of that Texas bullpen. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Ketchell's been awful. 
He's they've uh, Boston's also hit him really hard. Three seventy in forty one plate attempts is uh, Boston's BVP numbers. FIP of mid fives. Uh, the stat cast data is surprisingly good, mm-hmm. but he's just been terrible. I mean, yeah. he's over the last 20 starts, he's walking 4.5 per nine. So a ton of guys are getting on the base path and they're just doing some work. And Vegas has a five implied total ton of like about uh, Boston. If Ketchel gets out of the game early too, you have that bullpen, which is terrible. So it's kind of crazy to see. I mean, how far he's come in the other direction from being on the Astros where he was absolutely totally totally a he was an ace at one point for them I believe and just yeah you know, and I mean he's he's getting up there in age I get it he's had a couple decent starts this year so it wouldn't be that surprising if he was able to against a Boston offense mm-hmm. that hasn't been that great but uh I mean yeah Going on his track record recently, I think you got to like Boston. He's 34. I just looked it up. What an old man. (laughs) Now let's take a look at the Royals at Tigers. Righty Drew Hutchinson on the hill for the Tigers. 401 ERA for him, 260 opponent average. Now he hasn't been bad the last few games and Mm -hmm. hasn't given up more than two runs in his last three However, you know, the Detroit Tigers are middle of the pack, and I believe he doesn't go too deep into games, if Mm -hmm. I remember correctly from looking at his stats. Are you going with the field on this one? Uh, The KC offense has been pretty good lately. So they have been hot. Hutchinson hasn't been good. Mm -hmm. uh, He's maxed out right around five innings recently. So... We will see a little bit of that bullpen. He's actually averaging 41% less fantasy points at home, too. So he has been worse at home. He's one of those rare pitchers that just hasn't put it together at home. Um, stat cast wise, some 30% hard contact, lots of barrel balls. He's been okay. He just hasn't been great. Um as far as if I'm going with Casey, I don't know. I, I think he's been good enough to probably not follow the field here. But uh, Casey offense definitely mm-hmm. coming around. Now let's take a look at some low-owned team stacks. See where we can find a little value. Mm-hmm. We're going to look at the Astros. They're at the Angels. It's going to be the lefty Reed Detmers on the hill for them. 347 ERA, 217 opponent average. Okay, are you ready for an analogy? Yes. Of his season that I just kind of thought of. It's his season's so weird. So it's kind of like Game of Thrones, the series, right? So it starts off. It's it starts everybody's out great. Great. He has a no hitter. Mm-hmm. Game of Thrones is awesome, and then all of a sudden just falls off. Hey, during, totally. You know, just from the pinnacle of his career mm-hmm. with the no hitter, and then the ending was just terrible. Then he gets sent back down to the mm-hmm. minors. So, yeah. And then, I'm not ready for it. They bring House of Dragon. But so wait, the show refines more. itself. Reed Detmers refines himself yeah. in the minor leagues. Now he comes back. He's dealing. He did say all he had to do was make an adjustment with his shoulders or something. And since then, he's been finding it. Yes. However, today he's facing a team in the Astros. They have the six highest OPS in the last 30 days. Yeah, and he's still allowing 40% fly balls. This Houston team's extremely dangerous, as we all know. Uh, Versus lefties, almost a 400 Woba, 165 ISO. And those are team numbers. So very high team numbers. 4.6 implied total from Vegas. So Vegas obviously thinks Houston's going to put up some runs. The bullpen's not that great, so if they're able to get uh, Detmers out of the game quick, it could be, you know, a, mm-hmm. a big showing here. And we have seen Detmers have some blow-up yeah. games. So, how'd you like that analogy, by the way? That's why you gotta watch Game of Thrones. I, it's, you know, House yeah. of Dragons. I, very I am, good. I'll, I'll tune in. Let me I haven't know in the comments yet. if you understand what the heck I'm talking about with that one. Nobody really knows. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. Let's talk Cardinals now. Going up against Adrian Sampson 
of the Cubs. He's a righty for them, mm -hmm. three nine seventy or a two seventy one opponent average. Although he hasn't gone past three and a third in his last two starts yeah. in this Cardinals offense, yeah, we know what they're capable of. Yeah, and what's weird is the last start he only went sixty one pitches. He only gave up one run. Just mm -hmm. they pulled him after sixty pitches. So if we see that again, you're also into that Cubs bullpen a little bit earlier. And St. Louis is just a great offense. 330 Woba, 170 ISO, so they hit the ball real hard. Uh, the one thing we do have to say is, you know, just a warning to make sh to watch the weather on this one. Um, but all in all, this Cardinal offense is great. Samson's is not great. And uh, any time I can get that Cardinal offense at a low ownership, I'm intrigued. They're kind of like House Targaryen. <laughs> or maybe the Dodgers are House Targaryen. I can I... decide. Gosh, the Dodgers. Uh, okay. Why are the Dodgers so good? They Just are. Just make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look now at our sleeper picks of the day. Yes. We are using the Line Star app if you don't have it already. Make sure you lock in your subscription at $19.99. Prices do go up next week for football season to $29.99, so lock it in right now. It's going to help you tremendously in your daily fantasy. It'll also help you out with prop bets as well. We've got a lot of new features that are coming out as well. So make sure to lock that in, linestarapp.com. Now we'll take a look at our sleeper picks of the day. Our sleeper pick of the day on DraftKings is Oakland A's Dermis Garcia. He's going up against Baltimore Orioles. Dean Kramer today. Taking a look at his price, $2,000. Pretty good deal there. Let's take a look further at his uh, player card here. And you can see he's put up some great fantasy points the past few days. He had 18 the other day, 16 two days ago. Now he's got a two and a half star alert. What we do like is he is a top 5% hitter versus righty pitchers with a 257 fantasy points per plate appearance it is a pretty small sample size there but he has crushed it true just 38 uh, at bats for him and a 303 average mm -hmm. though so he's been doing mm -hmm. well for the A's. and as you can see some people in the line star community already liking him we'll give it a like too all right now let's take a look at our FanDuel sleeper pick of the day is Lamonte Wade Jr. The Giants outfielder will be going up against Phillies Kyle Gibson. He's $2,200 on FanDuel. Taking a look at his player card, he has a projection of 11, uh, basically 11 for today for fantasy points. And could be batting first in the lineup mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're anticipating lineups are not at yeah wind is blowing out to left at eight miles an hour and this is a top 25 percent hitter versus righty pitchers 2.38 fantasy points per plate appearance and taking a look at some of his numbers he's got a pretty high iso so mm -hmm. got some power there so twenty two hundred dollars for lamonte way jr on FanDuel. that's our sleeper pick of the day there for more value picks and more information and stats to help you dominate in daily fantasy, plus our lineup optimizer. Check out linestarapp.com. Now it's time for our home run calls of the day. Tyler, you hit yours yesterday with Austin sure Riley, did. who delivered for you. So, who is your home run call for today? I am going with St. Louis Cardinals, Nolan Arenado. He is just absolutely on fire. He is hitting 450 with two home runs over the last week, 360 and eight home runs over the last month. He's four for eight against Samson with 500 ISO, and I think he's going to go yard today. Uh, this game, there is a little bit of weather question here. If it is canceled, we will uh, tweet out a new home run with my backup call. All right. Well, we'll stay tuned mm -hmm. to that game. I am going with... Pete Alonzo for a bomb today. It's plus 285 on the sports books. This is a righty bat that absolutely crushes righties. He's got a 520 slugging. Today, Alonzo is going up against the righty for the Nationals in Josiah Gray, who has the third highest home run per nine rate among all pitchers, minimum 50 innings pitched. 
He gives up about two home runs per game over his last eight starts, so that bodes well for Alonzo. Mm -hmm. Plus, that Nationals bullpen, yeah, they've given up the third most home runs this season. Mm -hmm. Pete Alonzo going yard today. We're seeing a polar bear bomb. Let's go, big meat Pete. Let's go. And now it is time for our prop bets of the mm -hmm. day. We hit our props yesterday, which means one lucky commenter from yesterday's show gets $60. Mm -hmm. That easy. Who is our winner for today, Tyler? <laughs> Get some is winning yesterday's prop bet. Please DM us on uh, Twitter or email me, Tyler at betfully.com. Well, user get some is getting some cash. Yeah. $60. So let's get Straight some more props. cash, homie. <laughs> Remember, you can play today's prop contest. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and comment below. Now, our props are available on Underdog for today. If you don't already have Underdog, make sure you download the app. It's a great way to get your props in. So make sure if you do, new users who deposit at least $10 will get up to $100 of your deposit matched using promo code LINESTAR plus two free months of LINESTAR. So check that out. Link is below. Use promo code LINESTAR with that. Let's get to our prop bets mm -hmm. of the day. Tyler, where are you headed for today's prop? I am going Mark Kanya over 0 0.5 hits. He's hitting 303 versus righties over his last 20 games. He's two for two versus Gray, and he has hit at least one hit in 66% of his games this year and six of the last 10. And I think he's getting another hit today. All right. I am go going. I'm going Gumby today for oh, my boy. prop bet. Jordan Montgomery over four and a half strikeouts. That is at minus 175 mm -hmm. on some of the sports books. So you're getting amazing value on underdogs. So I'm loving this prop in terms of that. But the Cubs also have the seventh highest strikeout rate against lefties. Montgomery, 21.4 strikeout rate, averaging about 4.8 strikeouts per game. He's hit this mark in three of the last five since he's been traded to the Cardinals. Against the Cubs this season, he's faced them twice, and he's gotten seven strikeouts and five strikeouts, respectively. I think he goes over this today and gets those strikeouts. I like it. Jordan Montgomery. I like it. Gumby. Painful mm -hmm. to see him in Cardinals uniform and not in pinstripes anymore. And dealing. And dealing. <laughs> Still a big fan of his. Yeah. So Maybe I'll see him in the playoffs. World Series. <laughs> Gumby versus Yankees. Man, the Cardinals are really good. Yeah, they are. I don't know. The Yankees are worrying me. I don't even know if they're going to win the A. I'm really hoping that Oswald Peraza brings it. Yeah, I, I mean, he could energize the team a little bit, too, so. I've already thought of a little catchphrase for him. Oh, boy. I'm down with OP, you know, like, down with OPP. OPP, -P. yeah. I like it. I wonder what his middle name is. It would be great if it also started with a P. Yes. <laughs> if that's the case, the Yankees uh, should be running with that, and that needs to be his walkout song. A hundred percent. So. That's going to do it for us today on this Friday. We'll see you guys next week. Good luck in all your prop bets and daily fantasy. We'll see you guys on Monday and just a little go dogs to end for today. <laughs> go dogs. I'll give you one. <laughs> see you guys Monday. Have a good one, guys. Bye.